Number eight, explain why an egg cooks more slowly in boiling water in Denver than in New York City. Hint, consider the effect on temperature on reaction rate and the effect of pressure on boiling point. Okay, so let's first break down what's going on with the effect of temperature and reaction rate. Now, in general, the, the theme goes that if you have higher temperatures, if you have higher temperatures, that means that whatever the reaction is undergoing, right, from reactant to product, um, that rate of reaction will increase. So this is a direct relationship that if you have, if you're increasing your temperature, and maybe I'll just make this singular, if you're increasing your temperature, the rate of reaction is also increasing, and that means that it's going to be a faster reaction. If something is faster, that means that it takes less time to do. Okay, so that's the general idea, that the higher the temperature is, the more the, the faster the reaction is going to go, and it just takes less time. You can think about this in terms of why we have refrigerators. The reason why we have refrigerators is to preserve our food for days in which we don't eat it, right? In cases of meat and fish, we put it in the refrigerator and sometimes even in the freezer, depending on how long we're going to, how long time goes by before we eat it, because we don't want anything to happen to the meat, right? In terms of maybe bacterial growing on it. So that's why we drop the temperature and we put it into the refrigerator because by dropping that temperature, the rate in which the spoilage is happening for your meat is going much slower. If we accidentally leave meat out on the counter, that's a higher temperature than where it should be in the refrigerator. And if you leave the meat on the countertop, right, at a higher temperature, the rate of spoilage, in this case, that's the reaction, for you know, lack of a better term, but it's going to happen faster, and that's why we have to keep those types of uh, you know ingredients in the freezer or the fridge to just preserve them. But now we have the first thing checked. Okay, so higher temps, faster reaction. Now, what's going to happen with pressure and boiling point? Well, here is a another general idea, right? When we learned about our pressures, right? Gases, when we did our gas chapter, we learned about pressure, volume, and temperature. And there is a relationship between pressure and temperature. Between pressure and temperature, it's always a direct relationship. So let's write that out. So be between pressure and temperature, these are direct relationships with each other, which means that if you increase a pressure or if you're allowed to have something, you know, at a much higher pressure, the temperature is going to also be higher and vice versa. If you lower the pressure, you are lowering your temperature. Now, in this case, we wanted to find the effect on pressure and a specific boiling point. But remember, a boiling point is, is just a specific temperature in which a liquid will convert into a gas. But it's still, you know, a temperature value. So we could just add it to here. If you have higher pressure, a higher temperature value, you'll have a higher boiling point. Okay? Okay. And if you have lower pressure, lower temperatures, you're going to have a lower boiling point. Okay. Now, I mean, if we wanted to link this together, right, we know that the higher the temperature, the higher the reaction. And since are, these are directly related if you do have higher temperatures, in general, it's going to be a higher rate of reaction. So let's throw that into the mix. We love seeing similarities because then we can kind of just make one big, beautiful assumption. Okay, cool. 
And then we'll do the same thing, right? For lower temperature values, corresponds with the lower pressure value, but lower temperatures would be slower. So let's do that, lower rate of reaction. And then before we finally get into it, let's see, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say that this is faster and this is slower. Okay, cool. So now, let's see, why does an egg cook more slowly in boiling water? Boiling means that it has reached its boiling point. Boiling point. So why does it cook more slowly in Denver? Shout out to Den Denver, right? Denverinians, maybe? Uh, I had the privilege of going to Colorado once. And we kind of did like a whole tour, at least as much as we could have, of the whole state of Colorado in a week. So we did Colorado Springs, the Garden of the Gods, Denver. Um, let's see. We did the Great Sand Dunes. Of course, the Rocky Mountains, Crest Butte. Um, Boulder, Colorado, we did one of the, the, um, what is that called? Like a park around there. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome state. Love your guy's state. If any, if anybody has the, the, uh, the time to go to Colorado, I would highly recommend it. It is crazy. Uh, anyway, let's keep going. But yeah, it was a fun, it was a fun trip. We drove up to Pikes Peak. That was intense. Got the donuts. <laughs> we got the donuts. All right. So now, let's talk about Denver versus New York City. So, also, New York City, I should give New York City a little bit more credit, but it is, uh, it's very close uh, to me. So it's kind of like, eh. <laughs> but I guess if I if I wasn't close enough to it, I would be praising it, but I guess it's that idea where, uh, what, what's that, what's that, uh, that saying something about things that you don't have or something like that. You, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, back to chemistry, but yeah, I mean, New York city, great, 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 great city. If you also have the privilege of going there on a vacation, if you have time also highly recommend. Okay. So now let's go on, uh, Let's draw, in terms of elevation, what Denver looks like and what New York City looks like. New York City, right, is right surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean, right? So it's, it's very, very close to sea level. So here, and we'll put maybe New York City on this side because Denver is more west. So here is New York City, very, very close to sea level. And now Denver, I believe Denver... The, uh, the, um, nickname for Denver is the mile high city, because I think it starts off a mile high from sea level. So roughly around a mile. And here is Denver. Denver, the, the city of Denver is, is much higher, way above sea level than New York city. And this has everything to do with pressure differences, right? As you go higher and higher and higher and higher, right? And if you are in cities that are way, 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 way higher up, and if you think of like the absolute highest, right? Mount Everest, there is way low pressure. So as you go higher and higher and higher up, your pressure is decreasing. And on the flip side, as you swim in the ocean, right, you, you go down and you try to go as low as you can, right, I mean, you feel it. The pressure is increasing. So as you go up, pressure is decreasing. As you go down into the depths of the ocean, pressure is way, 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 way high. And that's why we can't go down to the bottom of the ocean, you know, just by ourselves. We need technology because we would never be able to survive. Um... Okay, so we know that at the top, Denver has way less pressure, atmospheric pressure. And if it's a low pressure, right, we know that that temperature, the boiling point is going to be lower. And if you don't have 
you know, the temperature that New York City would have as far as boiling point, the rate of reaction is going to be way slower. So what I'm going to say is since Denver is a, is a lower pressure value, this line right here is for Denver. They're living in an environment that has a lower atmospheric pressure. So because of that, you have a lower boiling point. And since you're boiling at a lower temperature, that rate of reaction is going to be slower. As opposed to NYC, New York City, who is at sea level, the pressure is going to be higher. And because of that, your boiling points, aka your temperatures, are going to be higher. And the higher the temp, the higher or faster the reaction. So it takes less time. The faster means that your time, uh, maybe I'll say uh, less time, to accomplish that reaction. And for a slower, it just means more time. More, more, more time. So that's why basically this whole thing in a nutshell is why an egg will cook more slowly, more time slower in Denver than it does in New York City. It's all because of that elevation. The higher you go, the lower the pressure. And that's it. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. I try to get back to you as much as I can in my free time. So thank you so much for being part of the community. And I hope these videos are helping you out. Thank you so much for being here and, you know, hanging out. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will talk to you soon and have a great, great day. Okay. All right. Stay well. Be healthy. Be happy. Be healthy. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.